All right, so check this out. Behind me is a 1965 Ford F100. It's probably one of the coolest trucks ever made. And in this video, I'm gonna show you all around it. We're gonna talk about its history, talk about what makes it so special, and of course, show you all the cool gadgets and gizmos. Man, this thing belongs in like a Stephen King movie. Take a look. Sixty-five was a very transformational year for the Ford F-Series truck because Ford realized that what was essentially a motorized wheelbarrow was being used to take people to church and to restaurants and to diners and they had to kind of make them more usable on the road, not just like a farm implement. So, a couple of things happened in this year. First of all, the introduction of the crew cab that came midway through 1965. Secondly, probably most importantly, the introduction of twin I-beam front suspension, and lastly, the engine options. So the twin I-beam front suspension, Ford's first independent suspension in a pickup truck, and they used it for decades. It debuted in 1965 on the two-wheel drive F-Series truck. Here's a great way of looking at it. Prior to 1965, you had a solid front axle. When one wheel moved, so the other. Starting in 65, they basically cut the axle in half and gave you two little half shafts. So now, when one wheel moves, the other one is uninterrupted. Chevrolet was doing independent suspension for a little while by 65, but Ford finally introduced it, at least in the two-wheel drive trucks. Now, this is actually a four-wheel drive truck, <laughs> which is really, really rare, because most trucks sold in 65, the vast majority were two-wheel drive. If you wanted four-wheel drive throughout the 40s and 50s, you basically went and bought a two-wheel drive truck from a major manufacturer like Ford or Chevrolet, and then you went to a third party like Napco that would sell you a conversion kit to turn them into four-wheel drive. Well, by 1965, of course, Ford was building a four-wheel drive truck in-house, but it was a ridiculously expensive option and not one that many people opted for. But if you got four-wheel drive, you had a solid front axle so you didn't get that interesting twin I-beam, and then of course you've got manual locking hubs. All right. Let's take this beast for a spin. Now I do apologize for any echo in here. Um, it doesn't have a headliner. <laughs> You're basically in a can. <laughs> but let's talk about what it's like to drive the old Ford truck. First of all, lap belts. Not really sure these are original. Not really sure they would do much in a collision either because what you're looking at is basically a sword ready to impale you in the heart if you get into a big front end collision. But anyways, <laughs> starting up this old Ford truck, foot on the clutch. It does have a choke, but you really don't need it ever. I mean, this engine is just so excited to run. It's so willing to run. Now the transmission, a new process, 435. It's a four-speed manual, but you only use three of the gears. So here's how it works. Uh, you've got a low gear. That's in the position of first. But really, your first gear for everyday driving is actually going to be down into the left, where second would be. And then, of course, that is your second gear, third gear. Reverse is all the way over and down to the right. So that's the uh, transmission. Below that, you have the transfer case. So you have two high, down into four high there, and then up into neutral and then all the way forward is low range and one of the cool things about these old trucks is <laughs> they are geared super low and they just they're like perfect for for rock crawling anyway clutch take up it's pretty tall and off we go when you think of legendary engines, you're probably thinking of makes like Ferrari, Lamborghini, maybe Mercedes-Benz, but I would argue what's under the hood of this worn out old Ford is probably more spectacular than anything those manufacturers have ever built. You see, 65 was the first year of a true legend that took more people, more miles, problem-free than just about any other engine in history. Now here's how we get to it. It's a little different than a modern vehicle. There's no internal hood latch. Instead, you grab this big lever underneath the grill, pull that open, push up, there we go. And then you've got one more latch right here. And then, whew, it's a big chunk of iron. Okay, admittedly, it doesn't look like much, but, this is a 300 cubic inch Ford straight six. It debuted in 1965 in this exact truck, the F100. Wow. They built this engine from 65 to 1996 in the F series line of trucks. They built millions of them and they are 
virtually indestructible. <laughs> There's almost nothing you can do to kill a 300 cubic inch straight six. They don't make a lot of power, I mean, that's the horsepower output, but they make a lot of torque. It is a 4.9 liter engine and man, it is reliable. Now, one of the cool things about the straight sixes is actually the hood emblem. This is one of my favorite parts of the exterior design. They had this really vintage emblem. It's got this lightning bolt that slashes through this gear. This was unique to the six cylinder trucks. If you got a V8, the 252 cubic inch V8, you got kind of a V through the middle there, but I think this one looks cooler. Now, interestingly enough, this truck going on 60 years old doesn't drive that badly at all. I mean, you look at this truck and you think, well, oh, that's gonna be really scary to drive, but it isn't. You just have to be precise and deliberate with the transmission, and you have to take your time on everything. You have to plan for steering movements, you have to plan for brake inputs, you have to anticipate the light turning green because you gotta get it into gear. It just, it isn't to be rushed. I mean, maybe 60 years ago, you could drive this thing quickly. I don't think you're gonna do so today. I mean, you just have to be patient with it. You gotta kinda let it do its thing. All right, so here's a pretty funny piece of trivia. If you look at the front fender, it's got this really smooth sloping line. But if you look at the rear fender design, it's basically a square. It honestly doesn't look like the two match up at all. And initially I thought that, oh man, this truck has had a replaced bed. But interestingly enough, they built so few of the four wheel drive like F100s and F250s that they just used the carryover bed from the third generation Ford truck. So this is basically the same bed you'd get in 1959 or 1960, which is why it doesn't match the front end at all. Now, because you got an older bed, you also had a very rudimentary rear end design. You didn't have the kind of elegant tail lights on the two wheel drive trucks. Instead, you got these circles, which is a remnant of the 1950s. And then you've got the tailgate. Uh, most fourth gen trucks have a handle, much like a modern truck, but because it's four wheel drive, you get basically a barn door for a tailgate. So you got these chains, you undo the chains. Granted, on this truck, they're a little bit boogered up. But when you undo the chains, <laughs> Come on, buddy. There we go. What you have to do is lower the tailgate and then reattach said chains to keep it in place because otherwise it will fall down and smash against the bumper. That's pretty funky actually, but I guess it works. I mean, it's a simple idea and it still works 56 years later. So who am I to criticize it? Just gotta remember to, uh, replace the chains or you're gonna have a bad day. So this truck looks like it's had um, some minor cosmetic surgery done in it over the past five, six decades. I don't think the mirror is original to the truck because if you look up here, you'll see two holes on the A-pillar, two holes here in the door. This probably would have had originally a cool kind of California style mirror, but someone swapped it out with a more traditional boring style. But anyways, it does have a traditional keyhole located here in the side of the door. You use the key, you know, unlock the door, push the button and it glides open. But my favorite part about getting into this truck is this right here. I think this is really brilliant and something that modern manufacturers could incorporate. This is a running board. It's a step. You can see it's a good probably four or five inches lower than the floor. But the great part about it, when you close the door, it's hidden. It's out of use. So you don't have some ugly thing located along the side of the truck. You've got an integrated step into the actual cab shell and then you step in it to actually hop on into the vehicle. So one thing that is a little bit alarming about these older trucks is the location of the gas tank. Now the fuel filler is right here behind the driver door. Okay, it doesn't look that scary, but what is a little bit frightening is that the tank is actually riding shotgun with you basically. It's about four inches behind you. I mean, you can see it, fold back the seat and the tank is right there, which isn't great in the event of a collision or Maybe if you're smoking in the cab, which I assume people did a lot in the 1960s, and there's a small leak, it seems like a great way to go boom boom. Now the first thing you notice when you hop behind the wheel of the Ford F100 is the size of that wheel. It is huge. It's the biggest steering wheel I've ever seen. I mean, there's barely enough room to get my legs underneath the steering wheel, and I am basically a string bean, let alone someone with a bit of a gut. I don't know how you would, you know, drive this truck, because look at the space, but the steering wheel has to be huge because these trucks rolled on large tires and you needed that leverage. It's just, it's, it's enormous. It's the size of my arm and I'm six foot one. All right, this truck obviously has no power steering. It does have this monster steering wheel, 
but the steering is still one of the more interesting parts of driving this this old rig because you have to be moving to move the steering wheel you're not going to be moving the tires any other way and even still oh, it takes a lot of work to make tight maneuvers and the other thing too is i mean just the steering input that it takes to move the front of the truck like three or four degrees is immense to compensate for the lack of power steering what they did is give it this ratio out of a london bus so you're oh my god you're just constantly fighting the wheel in the parking lot at speed not too big of an issue it certainly lightens up but <laughs> you, you gotta be ready for those uh, parking lots. One thing I love about these old trucks and one thing that is so much better than new trucks is just the quality. <laughs> Here's what I mean. This is a very basic truck. Even for 1965, it doesn't have a lot of options. But unlike modern day basic trucks, it doesn't feel like you're riding around in okay, I hate to be harsh, but a porta potty. If you get into like a very base model XL from well, even today, the plastics are just so crummy and it just it doesn't feel that nice but even this truck which is also a base model they use so much more steel <laughs> they just use so much more design even in the entry level trim so for example this truck has a speedometer <laughs> and then it's got a couple of gauges and a couple of idiot lights if you got a more expensive truck you would have actually had a place here for a vault gauge as well as oil pressure but if you didn't get it it doesn't look bad. I mean, it doesn't look like they cheaped out on you. Instead, you've just got kind of these nice little stylized plaques. So this is what the key looks like in a 1965 Ford F100. This is actually the original key. It says Ford along the top. It's got this kind of stylized V. The funny thing is this truck is a monster. It's just big and scary and aggressive, but the key is this little itty bitty dainty thing. But you take the key, you put it into the ignition, which is over here on the left side of the steering wheel, like a Porsche Le Mans racer, <laughs> but basically, Click it to on, make sure the truck is in neutral, and then crank it over. And that's how you start an old Ford F100. On the subject of brakes really quick, this truck has a single circuit master cylinder. What that means is that all four drum brakes are driven off of one circuit, one little basically pot. And the issue with that is, if you blow a brake line in the right front, you're gonna lose all braking pressure and you're gonna have no brakes. Modern vehicles now have dual circuits, of course, so that the front and the rear are on a different circuit. So if you lose the right front, you're still going to have your rear brakes, not this. And the alarming thing is the parking brake doesn't work. <laughs> so if the brakes go out on this thing, you're not going to stop for pretty much anything. We're going to have to fix the parking brake. We're going to have to put dual circuit uh, master cylinder in it. Uh, maybe put power steering because obviously I have no upper body strength and that is cheaper and easier than me going to the gym for the next hundred years. Now this particular truck wasn't equipped with air conditioning, but they did give you some things that help cool you off in the summer. One of my favorites is this little knob here that says air. When you pull this out, you can actually see what happens. There's this flap that opens up down here by your left knee, and that lets in a nice stream of cold, refreshing air push it in and it closes but by far the best feature which new trucks don't have and they need to have are the vent windows I love this you open those up get a nice stream of warm refreshing humid bug filled air I mean okay it doesn't have air conditioning but now I shouldn't say that there's no plastic in this truck whatsoever there of course still is plastic like the little knobs and switches but it's very durable plastic it actually feels really good 56 years later and of course the bezels are all metal now this switch is for your lights so you pull it out once that's going to be your parking lights you pull it out twice that is your main beam but then the high beam is actually located down here on the floor to the left of the clutch these old Ford gauges are probably some of my favorite ever. They just look so cool. They're so stylized. This one's looking a little bit sad and dirty, but we can clean it up. So in the center here, you've got your speedometer. It goes up to 100 miles an hour. That is wildly optimistic. But then to the left of that, you've got your alternator dummy light, your oil pressure warning lights, and then you actually have your fuel and your temperature gauge. Funny enough, all of this works. And at the very top, you've got a little red dot that's going to let you know that your brights are on. And then you have two small little green dots located here in each corner. These are for your flashers. So when you turn on, for example, your left turn signal, that starts to glow. And then of course your right turn signal, that's going to glow. And then here I'll show you the flashers too. Why not? Or I mean the high beams. That's going to be this button. Pretty cool. It's a nice truck to drive. It doesn't feel 
horrible. Like you could just kind of drive this around. You got to concentrate. I mean, this, this has got to stay in your pocket because there's just too much going on. You got to plan for the brakes. There's no power steering. I mean, this should be the penalty. If you're caught texting and driving, you got to drive a 65 Ford F100 for the next year because you can't. You just can't text and drive this truck. But that's one of the cool things about these vehicles is you have to be involved. You have to love them. And if you're behind one of these trucks, especially the straight six, I apologize. If that person is doing the best they can, just let them go about their day. You're going to get there. The difference between 45 and 55 on a country road, I promise you'll still make it to the destination. That dude is doing the best he can. All right, next up, we've got a blank there. To the right of that blank, we've got the choke. That operates the choke. But then next up, we've got the fan control. This is pretty cool. So you actually pull out to engage the heater. And then to turn the fan on and off, you turn the knob. So let me turn the truck on there. So that's your high fan for your heater. And then, of course, one more position that's going to be your low fan. Now, above this switch is this unlabeled knob. When you pull that out, you get this. <laughs> Check that out. That's your indicator for your hazards, and it alternates between the hazard warning and, of course, both of the green little lights flash as well at the same time. A lot of nice kind of small attention to detail things. Now up here we have a full steel dash. It looks great. Feels like it'll last my lifetime. Of course, you wouldn't want to crash into it at any kind of speed because that would be remarkably uncomfortable and probably deadly, to be honest. But here we have a little speaker cover. I think this is where the original speaker would have lived. And then we have vents both um, up on the driver's side and the passenger side for the defrost. Now, underneath the dashboard, we do have this super rudimentary lever. This controls the airflow. So we, of course, have off, we have defrost, and then we can turn it to on. But none of the actual heater elements are covered or shrouded. So to the right of that, this is actually your heater fan, and it's just completely exposed out in the elements. So next up, we have the ashtray. That functions like an ashtray. <laughs> to the right of that, we've got the glove box. Pretty decent size, actually. And then to the very right on the passenger side, we have another cigarette lighter. I'm not really sure why you need two in a cab the size of a grapefruit, but you can see where their priorities were at back in the 1960s. <laughs> this is pretty cool right here. This is the warranty plaque affixed to the side of the F100. It has stuff like the VIN on it, but it will also tell you really important information, like you see that right there, F11. That would indicate this is originally a factory four-wheel drive F100, but it tells you the trans and the axles and, of course, the GVW. Actually, it also tells you the net horsepower, 150. 50 at 3600 rpm now you can actually decode these and a nice guy named brian reached out and said he'd help us out and he's been very helpful so what he learned off this little plaque here this truck was built in june of 1965 in san jose it was sold originally with a 300 straight six which is what it has right now it's got well it was sold originally with 325 axles in it but most interestingly enough the actual color he discovered from that plaque that this was an original government truck. And if you can see, we've got tons of different colors going on here, but originally, I'm quite sure this truck was this green because this shows through pretty much everywhere. Four wheel drive, green F100. It kind of indicates that this truck was probably a forest service truck. Somebody at some point has obviously painted it more or less orange slash red but i think at one time this was a forest service truck i'm going to do some more investigating and we'll uh, definitely get some more info coming to you soon and the brakes are four wheel drum brakes non-power assisted but even on 35s it actually stops really really well drum brakes are one of those things that people hate on in 2021 they work perfectly fine. They're just not going to work perfectly fine after hours of going down I-70 constantly riding the brakes. They don't deal with heat dissipation very well. So one of the really cool feature on these old Fords is the location of the transfer case. So right up there you've got the engine, you can see the oil pan. Behind that you've got the new process transmission. But the transfer case is actually located kind of here in the middle of the truck. The cool thing about this is you have much more equal length drive shafts to the front and the rear, which makes them easier to lift because you don't have that big strain on the CV angles. This is actually the reason that the original Bigfoot was an F-250. Uh, this is called a divorce transfer case. And you've got that little itty bitty stubby shaft that merges the transfer case to the transmission. It's pretty cool stuff. So there you have it. A brand new to us 1965 Ford F100. We paid $6,500 for this truck. 
it's honestly pretty clean except for the major rust at the front of the bed, but the floors are good, the, the cab corners are good. I mean, it's a pretty solid truck. There's certainly maintenance items we need to do. We gotta fix the uh, single circuit uh, master cylinder for sure, fix the parking brake. It does have a leaky heater core, but apart from that, I mean, what do you wanna see done with this truck? There's certainly cool directions we could go. I mean, we could do like a little 4BT Cummins swap. We could look into doing a V8 swap. Uh, me personally, I would love to just keep it original because I'm a fan of original old cars, but let me know in the section below, what do you wanna see with this truck? What do you want us to do with it? Certainly we'll take it off road, compare it against new trucks, maybe do a little bit of towing in a helmet. <laughs> but as always, this has been Tommy with the Fast Lane Truck. Check out tfltruck.com for the latest and greatest in F100 reviews. We also need a name. Leave me a comment below, what should we, what should we call this truck?